All right, this is a tiny fraction of all the stuff I gotta do. Most of it I gotta do on the plane. These are just parts. So all this stuff, I've got a machine, aluminum brackets. Actually, this is carbon fiber molds that need to be made for that light. I need to machine aluminum ribs that go inside the wings for this one and a couple others. So I've got carbon molds, aluminum ribs, uh, more lights. Here I've got autopilot servos. This plane has never had an autopilot, so there is no starting point. So I've got to build all the hinges, brackets, uh, assemblies. Um, this won't work because I've got rounded edges where I've got to put it. So I've got to build rounded brackets for the autopilot. So that'll be all one off. Here I've got all my wiring, different sizes for the lights. Um, some of my favorite parts, the axles that are going in to uh, extend the axle length for the bigger tires and to handle the double brake setup. So I've got to do the brake setup, uh, gas caps, um, my relay box, that's finished. These are all the heating components. <laughs> That'll take a bit to get in. A bunch of lighting, fuel probes, transducer, dual pressure, regulator transducer for my torque. These are cool. These are actually an ultrasonic um, fuel sending unit. It just tells me if my fuel is low. So I'm going to put this to let me know when my wings are empty and the fuel is coming down the line that's going to the gear leg. And it'll send on a light on my dash that says the right wing is completely empty or the left wing's empty before I even start to see the fuel gauges on the gear leg start to drop. I'll have warning indicators that say wings are empty. I'm now flying on gear leg tanks so those got to go in little things they take a long time sounds fast but that bracket is for the new fuel cap that can handle jet a nozzles that's the low lead nozzle <laughs> so i've got a machine a bracket that goes from this size onto this plate so that'll be kind of a unique shape but easier said than done but i'll get that done come around here this is just a zillion fittings and parts that got to go in this is for all my vent lines, the fittings to do my vent lines, complete oxygen system. Since this plane is going to be capable of 28,000 feet, RDSM limited. Kind of cool to have a bush plane that goes to 28,000 feet. I've got a four place oxygen system. So all of this has to go in, all the relays, contactors, my on-demand post delivery system, uh, all the brackets to mount all those, that's all got to go in. Um, down this side, a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. So <laughs> that's probably <laughs> this much of the project. So I better get back to work, <laughs> but it's fun. So here's the new parts we just made. This is the new fuel neck for Draco to make this just now. This drops in and now a conventional Jet A cap will fit right here. So this was the original uh, cap that went into the top of the wing. I machined it, this part to dovetail and sleeve into the original location. If everything works right, which it did, this fits into the new machine part. And this is a traditional Jet A cap. So it's a lot bigger. I did change the height. This was actually about that location in height, but there was a problem that drove me nuts. Um, for an off-aircraft, off-airport airplane, which this clearly is, um, you really can only get a couple of degrees camber uh, side heel, and you just start draining fuel out of the wing, um, out the gas cap on the inboard side. And that drove me nuts. So all my vents are too low on the wing. I do a lot of heavy side healing. And um, it drove me nuts because if I saw fuel draining, I'd jump in and relocate my plane. It just it was an annoyance. So I've got that fixed. I've made this a lot taller. I'll have to put a fairing on the back. I'll probably put a bleed-in fairing on the front. And I'm redoing all the vent lines and arcing them higher on the wing. So I'll put some big fairings on top of the, on top of the wing. They'll act as a, as, a, as a fence as well. All right, I just got to the airport and uh, <laughs> I brought my phone up on a coffee maker and I might need some of that instead of Diet Coke, but it's about 11 o'clock at night. Um, I got a lot to do on Draco, so I'm going to see if I can get at least four or five hours in tonight and uh, still get plenty of sleep for work in the morning. 
So what I wanna focus on tonight while my phone isn't ringing is I'm going to split the ailerons, the flaps, the elevator, and the rudder and open them up. I'm gonna extend them a couple inches each. As I enlarge the wing, which I've been working on the drafting, that's gonna allow my plane to fly slower. The stall, stall speed will be slower. Of course, the turbine we're putting in it, it's gonna also fly faster, but as I slow the plane down, it affects everything else. I can't just put a bigger wing and think that I'm gonna have a safe aircraft. So I'm going to enlarge the aileron so I don't run out of aileron authority, enlarge the elevator, enlarge the rudder. So I don't know how far I'll get in the next four or five hours before I get tired, but um, I'm gonna try and split as many of those open as I can. And I'm gonna also start working on some of the uh, trim. I've yanked out the turn dial elevator trim, is now out of the aircraft. And I had no other trim, it was bent tabs. So while I'm splitting this, I'm gonna start laying out where I'm gonna put electronic trim servos, and I'm gonna put aileron trim, elevator trim, and rudder trim, and on a yoke. So this plane finally actually has real trim on it. So uh, well, I don't know how far I'll get, but I'm happy to be here. My phone's not gonna be ringing, <laughs> and it's time to get to work. I've got some parts drying up, some carbon fiber parts I made. So I'm jumping back and forth. I'm wiring up the aircraft, wiring up new lights. I got some great uh, new lights from Aero LEDs. These guys do a great job. The side lights, the beacon. Anyway, while I'm building a new aircraft or even working on an existing one, I actually like to test my wiring with the correct voltage, but very low amperage. It's a lot less risky. I could pack over a 60 pound, 28 volt battery since my plane doesn't have a battery in it yet and drag it around and test things out and make sure trim servos are working, my trim motors, my lights. It's kind of a pain. So, this looks kind of silly, but I made, I had my son make these for me. 12 volt, plus and minus. That's 27 volt. It, um, I'll show you how we made them. And uh, that way when you test things, you can quickly just touch things together like this and you can turn it on and you're not packing a big battery you can carry it up on the top of a tail throw it in a wing tip hook it right up at your trim motor i was using it today running trim motors man it's so much easier to just quickly turn your trim motor run it in and out and make sure that your your throw and your distance and your geometry of trim tabs are working right without having someone to run to the front of the plane or the back of the plane um, and also just, it's just handy. I can do it anywhere. I can set this inside the aircraft and touch the wires to it. But my son Dex made these for me, so I'll show you how he did it. I basically just took one of these nine volts and then the positive end of a double A, which is 1.5 volts each. And you uh, attach the positive to the negative on the nine volt, and then the negative end to the positive on the nine volt. And right there is 12 volts basically. And then after that, I just wrapped some tape, shrunk it all together, made it tight with that top piece, cut it out, and there's 12 volts. And for the 27, these actually were made to just clip together. So there's the positive, there's the negative, just clips together. There's 18, add another nine, and that's 27. In this case, we're doing what's called a series, connecting positive to negative to add up the volts. Direct current, negative, positive. 12.49 volts, and if you look closely, that is a nine volt battery and two 1.5 volt batteries, giving us a great 12 volt battery tester. And then let's test this other one. This is three nine volt batteries run in series giving us 27.6 volts. Two perfect testing devices. What do you think, bud? How'd we do? Uh, great. <laughs> you did do great. All right. I just got the leading edge slats off. <laughs> this was a hard decision to make. Not whether I was eventually gonna take them off, but whether I was gonna wait till after the turbine was done and I flew it to Oshkosh, or if I was gonna take the leap of faith that I would work all night long enough nights that I could rebuild the entire wing while doing the turbine and the cowling and avionics and wiring and still make Oshkosh. So <laughs> please make Oshkosh 
Because I took the leading edge off. I'm now going to cut these off. I'm going to make my new leading edge face of the wing that's coming clear out here. New and different uh, leading edge slats. I'll use the same slats, but their position was bad. I didn't like their location. I'm cutting these off and I can't go backwards. <laughs> I've now got to cut off this, take the edges off of this where the uh, carbon fiber wing tips were. I've got to change the end of this wing and make an entirely new rib. So I'm going to start getting that ready to cut out of the computer. But this has got to go, so this is commitment at this point because <laughs> there's no turning back. cutting wings apart. <laughs> I've done it on carbon, fiber, and aluminum so many times. It used to make me nervous, now it makes me happy because it means I'm moving forward. 